These power-hungry people have preyed on their own population in many cases. They are unelected tyrants who ran rigorous regimes, where dissent was met with torture and even death. As a society, the same question keeps coming back to haunt us. How did these so-called cults of personalities perpetrate terror, pain, and suffering for so long? My fellow citizens, who are working to make America great. I salute the Italians of America who unite in a single love our two nations. We'll delve into dictators on this week's episode of FYI. Welcome to For Your Info. English. You got it. You got it. Welcome to this, another exciting edition of FYI, and today we are going to take a look at a touchy subject, because, well, dictators, it's never a topic of conversation around the dinner table at Christmas, for example. No, this is a little bit of the underworld, the dark side. But I think it's important to take a look at that as well. We're not going to do every episode on donuts and lollipops. And as always, there's vocabulary to be learned out of every topic. Not just vocabulary associated with each topic we look at here on the podcast, but also vocabulary associated with everyday English. We always look at conjunctions here on the show. However, nevertheless... I usually stop and highlight pronunciation or common mistakes. So if you guys take notes, if you consider yourself English students, well, grab a pen, grab a notebook and take notes. I'm sure you can learn something new every week. I know I'm learning something new every single week here on the podcast myself, whether it's a Spanish word or a fun fact about our topic. The important thing is to laugh while you learn, to have a great time, and that's what we aim to do every week here on FYI. And if you guys haven't heard a topic that you'd like to hear about, don't forget you can contact me on social media or go over to my curious community on Patreon and you can drop me a line over there. And a quick reminder, if you're not in our curious community on Patreon, I don't know what you're waiting for. We are having tons of fun. We're learning. We're laughing. And that's what it's all about. And now you can join for free. Now, that won't give you access to all the posts, but at least you'll be in the know. But for as little as three euros a month, you can get a bonus episode every week, plus PDF documents to help you go over all the vocabulary, idiomatic expressions, and all that jazz. And if you're in our higher levels, our super duper students or our interstellar students, well, then you even have class with me every week. We have a weekly group class where we get together and review the things from the episode, among other things. And if you're in our highest level, our interstellar students, well, then you also get all that stuff and a private class with me. It's a deal. Un choyazo. You can get more information over at patreon.com slash Alberto Alonso. And if you need a free sample or if you have any questions, as I said, just reach out. And before we get started, I want to send a shout out to all my patrons, especially my super duper students, Marta, Javier, Paco, Roberto, and Mila. And don't forget about my interstellar students, the ones who get a monthly private class with me, as well as a weekly group class with me. That's five classes a month. And those students are Carmen, Lina, Isa, Paco, David, Jose Maria, Patricio, and Edgar. I urge you to join our curious community over on Patreon. Go to patreon.com slash Alberto Alonso. All right, let's get into dictators. 
Well, I guess we should point out that when we say the word dictators, in inglés al menos, empieza con la palabra verga, dick, dictator. So I guess it's an appropriate word. And a dictator runs a dictatorship. It's always good to look at the verbs, the nouns, the adjectives associated with each word. The example I always use here is boss, jefe, bossy, mandón, boss around, mandar. Now you know the word completely. Let's take a look at our intro. I started out by saying these power-hungry people. And if you're power-hungry, I guess it makes sense. You want more power, more, more. You're greedy. We talked about the word greed in our corporations episode. So these power-hungry people have preyed on... And to pray, I don't mean pray like our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. No, not that pray. That's P-R-A-Y. I'm talking about P-R-E-Y, which is another way of saying to hunt. And pay attention, it's to pray on. A good way to remember it is a lion preys on its prey. Un león acecha caza a su presa. So they prey on their own population in many cases. And careful with the pronunciation there, too. It's not population. It's, say it with me, population. Population. Then I said they are unelected tyrants. Unelected, I think, is pretty evident. And a tyrant is a harsh ruler, a despot. And they ran rigorous regimes. And in this case, the word run has nothing to do with correr. It's llevar, dirigir. You might know it from the idiomatic expression to run the show, which, by the way, in the bonus episode, we're going to take a look at a lot of idiomatic expressions and so much more. And the word regime, I guess that's a French word. They ran rigorous regimes where dissent was met with torture and even death. And dissent is disagreement. Then I said, as a society, let's pronounce that word together, society. The same question keeps coming back to haunt us. To haunt is what a ghost does. But also a memory can haunt you. I think we even looked at haunted houses in our Halloween episode. Again, we're getting to know the idea behind the word haunt. And the question that keeps coming back to haunt us is, how did these so-called, tal llamados, cults of personalities perpetrate terror, pain, and suffering for so long? Then we heard Benito Mussolini, and he said something about making America great. It's interesting because I didn't know Mussolini spoke English. And obviously we'll talk about old Benny later on. And I wrapped up the intro saying, we'll delve into indagar. That's one of the first words I learned in Spanish when I started doing this podcast. As I always say, you aren't the only ones learning here, folks. So we'll delve into dictators on this week's episode. As I said before, this is not a pretty topic. Maybe it's not one you want to listen to with the kids. I mean, when you talk about torture, death, starvation shooting squads, coup d'etats. It's never a pretty thing. Let's kick off with a little etymology. The word dictator comes from the Latin language. You know that being Spanish, dictar, dictamen. But in the Roman sense of the word, a dictator was a Roman magistrate who was given sole power for a limited duration. So it was originally an emergency legal appointment in the Roman Republic, and also in the Etruscan culture as well. But back then, the term dictator did not have the negative connotation that it has today. It was somebody who would come in temporarily when there was a problem, and they would be like a temporary leader, an interim leader, if you will. It started to get its modern negative meaning with Cornelius Sulla, It was Cornelius Sulla's ascension to the dictatorship after Sulla's civil war, and he made himself the first dictator in Rome in more than a century. 
and he did it with the de facto clause, which eliminates a time limit or a need for a Senate. Eventually, he avoided a major constitutional crisis by resigning, to resign or to step down. He was the leader for less than a year. Then another guy followed suit. He saw what Sulla did, but he wanted to do it successfully. And this was in 44 BC. Does anybody know who I'm talking about? Here, let me give you a clue. The die is cast. La suerte está echada. Did you say Julius Caesar? Good job. That means you know your history and you've possibly listened to our FYI episode on the Roman Empire. So yeah, little Julius Caesar was paying attention and he was proclaimed dictator perpetuo, which in English would be dictator in perpetuity. And there were no limits on his power. There was just one problem. He was assassinated the following month. There are no rules when it comes to power grabs. Following his assassination, his heir, Augustus, and I didn't mean heir aire, aunque suena exactamente igual. Heir is aire, but there's another word that's heir, and that's heredero. So his heir, Augustus, was offered the title of dictator. But he declined it. He turned it down. Also, later successors also declined the title of dictator. So it started to really get a bad rap, the word. People said, no, call me emperor, but don't call me dictator. No, no, no. And now it brings us to modern day where if you call somebody a dictator, you're not saying something nice about them. So what is a dictator? Good question. Let's define it. A dictator is a political leader who possesses absolute power. A dictatorship is a state ruled by one dictator or by a small clique. A little clique is a little group. The word originated, as we said, from the Roman Senate, and they were used to rule the Republic temporarily in times of emergency, like the term tyrant and to a lesser degree autocrat, dictator came to be used almost exclusively for oppressive rule. In modern usage, the term dictator is generally used to describe a leader who holds or abuses an extraordinary amount of personal power. Dictatorships are often characterized by some of the following. Suspensions of elections and civil liberties. Proclamation of a state of emergency. Rule by decree. Repression of political opponents not abiding by the procedures of the rule of law and the existence of a cult of personality, as we said before. Dictatorships are often one party or dominant party states. So that's what a dictator and a dictatorship is in black and white. Also, in many cases, dictators grab the power through a coup d'etat. But what do you need if you're going to have a coup? We don't pronounce it coup. We say coup. Well, obviously, you're going to need military backing. If you don't have the support of the military, you're not getting too far. So there's always been an association between a dictator and the military. Some even wear military uniforms. Now, in the case of Francisco Franco, he was a general. So he was wearing his uniform. And Manuel Noriega, there's another example. He was officially the commander of of the Panamanian Defense Forces. But some of them, who have had no military experience at all, dress as if they were soldiers, or high-ranking officials, I should say. So even if they don't have the backing or the support of the military, it looks like they do. And that's so important. It's all about perception. That's where the idea of propaganda comes from. Tell them it's blue, even if it's red. If you keep telling them it's blue, maybe they'll believe it's blue. And speaking of propaganda, I'd love to do an episode in the future on Edward Bernays. I don't know if you guys would find that interesting, but he's the guy who made bacon popular for breakfast, who made women smokers, and he learned from the best, from his uncle, Sigmund Freud. I think we should do a special episode on propaganda. Well, either way, let's delve into it a little bit here. When you think of propaganda, I think one of the people that always pops into your mind is Goebbels. The Nazis had a master of propaganda. And I realized recently I was watching some Warner Brothers cartoons with my daughter 
ones that I used to see when I was a kid, and I didn't realize it then, but it totally blew my mind now to realize I was watching an ad for the United States military, only with Daffy Duck and all the Looney Tunes characters. You're despicable. So propaganda can even leach into children's cartoons. And supposedly in the United States, we don't have a dictatorship. However, our media exposes us to propaganda. And we're going to talk about the role of the media as well. Sure, you need the soldiers, the military behind you, but you also need the media behind you. Or at least not talking smack about you. Talking smack about you is talking bad about you. And dictators, or at least their, their crew, the people around them, have to be masters of crowd manipulation. I mean, if you've ever seen some of these old videos from World War II and you saw Benito Mussolini or Adolf Hitler addressing a crowd, it was insane. It was fervor. It was energy. It was getting people all riled up. So being a good orator, being charismatic is really important, especially if you're going to convince people that you're good even though you're killing people. And as we know throughout history, some dictators have been more charismatic than others. The same applies to politicians, by the way. But even if they make a mistake in a speech or say something or, you know, somebody catches them in a compromising situation, don't worry. They've got the media in their pocket. Well, they'd better. If you're a good dictator, you'd better have the media in your pocket. Of course the media is important. If public perception is important, then the media is the speaker. And also, if you seize control of the media, well, you can censor anything you need. There's a, a big debate right now about censorship on Twitter and other social media platforms. Again, a lot of these things can be applied to our politicians of today. Okay, maybe they're not lining people up in a firing squad and shooting them, but they are making money off the blood of others. And you also have to convince people that they're not getting screwed over. There's some kind of expression that says if you repeat the lie enough times, it becomes the truth. And they even give themselves fancy titles. Mussolini called himself Il Duce, Hitler, Der Führer, El Caudillo over here in Spain. And Stalin, I didn't know this one, he gave himself the same name as Superman, the Man of Steel. You can't take Superman's name. Not cool, Stalin. You may have been a powerful guy, but you'll never be as powerful as Superman. Let's talk a little bit about some of the abuses of power right now. As we know, generally their tactics violate human rights. They're not too interested in human rights in general. When you're power hungry, all you see is power. For example, Soviet dictator Joseph Stalin he enforced his government policy by a secret police. He established the gulag system. I'm sure you've all heard of it. These were kind of prison labor camps. And anybody who opposed him, dissented, disagreed, well, they were thrown into these labor camps. Other human rights abuses that we've seen coming from the Soviet Union, human experimentation. And again, these are not exclusive to the Soviet Union. The use of psychiatry as a political weapon. This is manipulating people's minds, brainwashing, mind control, all of this stuff. Denying people basic freedoms such as freedom of religion, freedom of assembly, and even things such as the freedom of speech. Similar crimes were committed by Mao Zedong. He ruled over the People's Republic of China, as I'm sure you all know, during what was called China's Cultural Revolution. And his goal, and he said it very clearly, was to purge dissidents. And he did this through the use of youth groups. Youth groups that were strongly committed to his cult of personality. Their main goal was to adore their great leader, to emulate him. Some dictators have been associated with genocide. I guess the most common example of that is the Holocaust. And in the bonus part, we're going to take a look at the most brutal dictators. We'll also take a look at some fun facts. Yes, believe it or not, there are some fun facts even about dictators. I should say fun, freaky facts. Again, these shows are not for children this week. But we'll also talk about Pol Pot 
and the Cambodian genocide in what is called the killing fields. And in no moment are we going to glorify any of this violence. This is just to talk about what happened in history, so we hope it never happens again. Unfortunately, history repeats itself. Let's take a look at a couple historic quotes right now, and then we're going to hear an audio clip from my favorite comedian, George Carlin. The first quote we're going to take a look at is from the one and only George Washington, the first president of the United States. And he said about power, few men have virtue to withstand the highest bidder. Let me translate that. Hay poca gente que tiene virtudes para aguantar o mejor resistir a el que mejor paga. So the highest bidder, think of an auction. It's the person who offers the most money. So now that you know what it means, I'll say it again. Few men have virtue to withstand the highest bidder. So what he's saying is money can corrupt any man. And when they say men back then, they mean women too, obviously. Speaking of, this woman was very powerful. The Iron Lady, Margaret Thatcher. And she said, power is like being a lady. If you have to tell people you are, you aren't. Very short and sweet there, but it's true. If you have to tell people how great you are, are you really that great? And our last quote is from Thomas Jefferson, one of the founding fathers of my country. Experience has shown that even under the best forms of government, those entrusted with power have, in time and by slow operations, perverted it into tyranny. So it deals with the idea that power corrupts. And we're going to wrap up this first part with George Carlin. This is a comedy sketch, but it's also a man who was a visionary, who was ahead of his time. And what he's telling you is you shouldn't trust the government. They're not your friend. They don't care about you. They just want to make money and advance their agendas. And this is from about 10 or maybe even 20 years ago. But it's as true today as it was back then. The famous line that George Carlin says here is, it's a big club and you're not in it. Plus, this is chock full of vocabulary. Let's see how much of it you understand. Here's the one and only George Carlin. There's a reason for this. There's a reason education sucks. And it's the same reason that it will never, ever, ever be fixed. It's never going to get any better. Don't look for it. Be happy with what you got. Because the owners of this country don't want that. I'm talking about the real owners now. The real owners, the big wealthy business interests that control things and make all the important decisions. Forget the politicians. The politicians are put there to give you the idea that you have freedom of choice. You don't. You have no choice. You have owners. They own you. They own everything. They own all the important land. They own and control the corporations. They've long since bought and paid for the Senate, the Congress, the state houses, the city halls. They got the judges in their back pockets. And they own all the big media companies, so they control just about all of the news and information you get to hear. They got you by the balls. They, they spend billions of dollars every year lobbying, <laughs> lobbying to get what they want. Well, we know what they want. They want more for themselves and less for everybody else. But I'll tell you what they don't want. They don't want a population of citizens capable of critical thinking. They don't want well-informed, well-educated people capable of critical thinking. They're not interested in that. That doesn't help them. That's against their interest. That's right. They don't want people who are smart enough to sit around the kitchen table and figure out how badly they're getting fucked by a system that threw them overboard 30 fucking years ago. They don't want that. You know what they want? They want obedient workers. Obedient workers workers, people who are just smart enough to run the machines and do the paperwork and just dumb enough to passively accept all these increasingly shittier jobs with the lower pay, the longer hours, the reduced benefits, the end of overtime, and the vanishing pension that disappears the minute you go to collect it. And now they're coming for your social security money. They want your fucking retirement money. They want it back so they can give it to their criminal friends on Wall Street. And you know something? They'll get it. They'll get it all from you sooner or later because they own this fucking place. It's a big club. And you ain't in it. You and I are not in the big club. And by the way, it's the same big club they used to beat you over the head with all day long when they tell you what to believe. All day long, beating you over the head in their media, telling you what to believe, what to think, and what to buy. The table is tilted, folks. The game is rigged. And nobody seems to notice. Nobody seems to care. 
Good, honest, hardworking people. White collar, blue collar, doesn't matter what color shirt you have on. Good, honest, hardworking people continue. These are people of modest means. Continue to elect these rich cocksuckers who don't give a fuck about them. They don't give a fuck about you. They don't give a fuck about you. They don't care about you at all. At all. At all. Yeah. You know? And nobody seems to notice, nobody seems to care. That's what the owners count on, the fact that Americans will probably remain willfully ignorant of the big red, white, and blue dick that's being jammed up their assholes every day. Because the owners of this country know the truth. It's called the American dream, because you have to be asleep to believe it. Wise words from a wiser man. Folks, I hope you enjoyed this episode, and I hope you'll join us in the bonus episode of today's F.Y.I.